Okay folks, here's our ogre. This ogre is the one that we intend to transform into a man-eater and we need him to look different and all I've done here is put together the typical kits that you get off the sprue for the ogres, the ogre balls or ogres as they're called now, they're not called ogre balls anymore. Uh, typical sword, one-handed sword, the flagpole all the way through, a fairly plain gut plate which I chose on purpose, I wanted the plain area so I can do a design in the middle here. Um, the ogre has a lump on his head, beard, crooked teeth, just like a normal ogre. Okay, so nothing special about him. So that is the introduction of the fella that we're going to convert over the next few weeks into an ogre man-eater, fit for anybody's army. Now when designing it's important that you have a clear idea of what it is you want going, then you know it does help you set off in the right direction. Now I decided to be different, I was going to go for a Zorro. So, my ogre man eater is going to be based on the theme of Zorro. So to help me clarify my idea of what I wanted from Zorro, I went on the internet and looked at images of Zorro. And this is a typical image of Zorro that we would see. This one's drawn by Gonzalo Martinez. And you can see everybody would recognise it as Zorro. The familiar sword, the hat, the pencil moustache, which fell out of favour in the movie where, with Antonio Banderas and a huge oversized cape. Now, capes were designed to keep you dry and warm. <laughs> that cape is just going to get in the way. It's massive, but it looks really effective on a comic. That's why he's got a huge cape. The other things, I've got the cover of the DVD here of the probably the most famous incarnation of Zorro nowadays and the iconic Z. That's what Zorro was famous for scratching and that was his graffiti mark, if you like, to let the rulers know that he'd been there and he was still active in the area. So I've started off with the, the overall image of what I'd like him to look like. The boots, the cape, the sword, the hat and the um, bandana. Is that a bandana? Mask. And then moved on to one of the iconic things which isn't portrayed in the image, but that iconic Z. Anybody who's ever watched Zorro will know that. I've then taken another image off the internet. We've got the Z in the background and then we've got a shiny blade coming through. I don't know how comfortable an ogre would be with a shiny blade, but the reason I've got this image is because of the top of the sword. And if we look at the top of the sword, compare it with the classical cartoon drawing of Zorro, there it is again. So that is an important factor. Another thing is the hat. It's a bit like a cowboy hat, but it definitely has more of a Mexican influence. And in a search for Zorro, a style of hat came up, which I'm going to base the hat on for the Ogre Man Eater. Pussing boots from Shrek. Everybody, well, I say everybody, most people know Shrek, know Pussing Boots, one of my favourite characters out of the movie. The reason I've got this picture included in my design research is these boots. I like their the overlap on the boots, the big exaggerated overlap. Okay, again he's got the Zorro hat and he's based on Zorro. From memory Antonio Banderas did the voice for him, so definite a Zorro influence uh, for pushing boots. Okay, and then I went for a pose. Now I like this pose. Hand in the air behind him, cape flapping in the wind. I don't know if I'll bring the cape up all the way here, I might bring it just down here so that it looks like he's flapping, he's thrown it the other side of him and the sword outstretched. The problem we have is that if we're converting an ogre model where he's looking straight ahead, this guy's looking to the side. So we need our ogre looking down from above. Instead of looking that direction, he needs to be looking that direction. His hand as well is coming up, that will work, but he's holding a staff. So we need to get rid of the staff. And that sword, in no way, shape or form, resembles that sword. Okay, so these are things that we're going to have to consider and make changes to the ogre as we go through. So this is the kind of thing I'm going to go for in his pose 
and these are the iconic things that I would like to bring in. Okay, I like the idea of this Z or Z as the Americans say in this area here on his breastplate or his gut plate in there. So over the next few weeks we are going to transform him. So I glued this model together so you can see what we're starting with, exactly where he is. And then I'll show you step by step what I've done. And for that, I am going to zoom in. Yes. So I have an ogre body here, exactly the same ogre body as the one used on this side, down to the same ogre plate. And if you look on the back, you can see exactly the same. It's the A model um, on the ogre sprues. If I just pick up an ogre sprue, there are two bodies you can have. One is marked with an A, one is marked with a B, and you can see where I've cut out the B model to be used on here. So there's our model. Now, from our pose, if I put the pose over the top, I want him looking to the side slightly. So the first thing I'm going to do, instead of having him look straight forward, I want to turn him so that he's at that angle. Okay? So instead of straight forward like that, I want him at that angle. The easiest way to do that well, the quickest way to do that was to cut along his boot line there. If I hold it right up to the camera, will it focus? There you go. Can you see where I've cut along the boot line? Now, in order to do that cut, I have used a razor saw. I've used one of these. Now, you can buy these in Games Workshop. I forget how much they cost now. Um, if you do buy one, you know, just use it on plastic. You could use it on lead, um, pewter and things like that, but I wouldn't use it on heavy any heavy materials because you will blunt and ruin it. That blade is designed for cutting light materials. So that's what we're going to focus on. So I use that to cut and I'll show you why I use that to cut. So when cutting bits off plastic, there's different ways. I've put the tile underneath to protect the surface. First way I'm going to show you is using one of these the um, precision knife, a craft knife, effectively. Now, if I want to cut a longer line, I'm having to go backwards and forwards. It's hard work, I am pressing quite heavily on this. You can see that from the discoloration in my fingernail. Um, and I assure you this is a new blade I've put in today. And you, you can see me cutting. It hasn't got perfectly, yeah, not a perfect degree cut, 90 degree cut. Um, there is some um, edge distortion around the edge. Not a bad cut though, and that is using that cut. So if all you have is one of these, you can manage. You're probably best scoring it all around the outside, but if I hold it there, you can see there is an angle. Because the blade, you know, is quite bendy, you're not gonna get a perfect cut with that. The next method are clippers. Now clippers, even if they're flush clip, clippers like these are from Games Workshop. If I cut a straight line with that, then you can see the distortion there. Ooh. Now one side's okay, the other side is really distorted. And you can maximise that to a certain extent. If I'm cutting with pliers along that line, one side's going to be very good and the other side's going to be distorted, exactly like it is with this. And if I try and put those, if I try and put those back together, I am going to have issues. Okay, that's bad from the top, but from the side you can see there's going to take a lot of repair work, so clippers aren't very good. The third method is using one of these razor saws. Now, with the razor saw, let's do it on this side, hold it, work it backwards and forwards, there's no rush. You do cut out more material than you would with a knife, but you have more control. You can see there, it's a more even cut and it goes back together quite nicely from the top and the side. So if you have one or if you can get your hands on one, use one of these. You could probably do something similar with a hacksaw. The trouble with a hacksaw is it's a lot larger and it's going to get in the way. But if you all you have is a hacksaw, use a hacksaw. Okay. So that is how to cut your plastic and be able to join it together without distorting it. I end up with two separate parts, quite clean cut for the leg 
And if I put that back there, you can see that goes there to make it look like the other one. Now I have I use blue tack. This is a hint that I picked up from Ubiki Mat, where you can use blue tack to put things in place as a rough fit, and then you can manipulate them without gluing them in place and having to change them later on. So if my ogre is going to stand that way and face this way, this foot here needs to be turned. I can't turn it too much, I can't do that because it'll look like his foot's broken because his kneecap's still there. I have to make several changes and I'm trying to keep this simple as an introduction to modding figures. So I'm going to split the difference and just have him so his foot is at an angle like that. And if I compare that to the other ogre, his feet, you can see it does make a difference. So now his body line has changed from straight ahead, straight ahead facing that way, to his body line has changed that way, just by angling that one foot. So step one in the modding of the ogre was to make that cut and alter his leg. With the ogre, he's got a beard. Most of the ogres have got beards. Those that don't have really long moustaches and I don't want either of those. I want him clean shaven and then I want to be able to put in uh, maybe a thin moustache curled as Zorro has one, just a pencil moustache. I haven't decided whether to give him one or not yet. So what I had to do next was remove this beard. Now to make the beard we've got bits of plastic coming off and we've also got lines in the plastic so we need to change those. And in order to do it I took the head. In order to do it, I took the head and cut off. Let's put the head side by side. Hopefully that works. Cut off the beard, rounded it so it was chin shaped and underneath as well, and then changed those lines coming off. Now I'm quite fortunate in that this ogre and all ogres have lumpy heads. So a bit of lumpiness on the chin I can get away with. I don't need to build up what I'm doing is taking away there. So there is my ogre head from one to the other. And hopefully the only thing I've changed is the chin. Hopefully you can see that there, the difference between the two. Okay, so again, blue tack. Now one of the things as well about the head is that he's looking straight forward and I wanted him to look this way in line with that foot that I've just done. So in order to do that I had to remove some of the material here so that his head would face in this direction. You can see that here I've used some some cutting lines to get it down. Now this was done through trial and error I would take a bit out try the head and keep going till I achieved the state that I wanted it to be in. So you can see there, there's the groove. I've got some blue tack in his head now to hold it in place. And then that head, when I put it in place, is looking in the same direction as his foot. So instead of being front on, as in this one, you can see that he's looking at an angle just by taking a bit out. Now the problem we're going to have to address later is not so much here, because I can make that up quite easily with green stuff, is this gap here. That gap will take filling. So that will be green stuffed uh, later, or filled with green stuff and then sculpted so that it looks part of his torso. But we'll go on to that next week. What I'm doing today is showing you how to get a clear idea in your mind and then start making changes for it. So that is the ogre so far. Yeah, the thing left to do now is the arms. Now as I mentioned earlier, with his arms in this pose, I want one arm coming up at the back and I want one arm thrusting forward with a sword in it. So they're the two that I'm going to go for. First thing and the easiest one out of the two was to take the flag arm. Now if you look at the flag arm, the flag arm 
bends so it does look like it's coming up at the back. Initially I made two straight cuts, one straight through the top of the hand and one through the bottom of the hand, being careful to leave the fingers in place. I used the knife on this one and the saw. Again I didn't use clippers because the clippers you get distortion. Once I'd done that, I started to use the knife and you can see there straight through. I started to use the knife to scrape away and cut away the inner flagpole. Now there is a bit left there and if I was so inclined I could gradually get rid of all that but I don't think I need to. I think I'll be able to hide that in the painting process. Now on the top because I'd cut it flat it was still flat so I started working and where the thumb is here, where the thumb is there I then gradually worked it round putting a line in there and a bit of knuckle. So it does look now like he has a bit of a thumb, a bit of a thumb and some forefingers. I've put some blue tack to hold him in place so then I will attach that to the arm socket where it's going to be and then if he's at the right angle you can see now it's not as far up as that hand but you get the idea his hand is up behind him. So that's a relatively easy solution in order to get the pose along the route I wanted. The next step and quite possibly the trickiest step was the arm, this arm that comes out. Now that is all going forward, that arm. There's no way about it, it's all going forward and I want this arm to be pointed out in this direction towards the camera. So first thing I did was I made a cut in his arm. Now if I, that is how the arm looks when it comes off the sprue and you can see there that that is the arm. And in order to make it point in the right direction, I used the saw and I cut along at an angle from the elbow joint because we bend at the elbows and the wrists. So that's where you want to make your cuts. And then I turned it, I've got blue tack holding it in place. I turned it in order to get the angle to the right place. Now the observant ones amongst you will notice that the muscles don't look right now and that is an issue that the muscles aren't lining up and that will be one of the subjects for the next tutorial part of the, the filling in with the green stuff. So let's put that arm onto the body. So there's the arm in place now that lump and that lump on his arms and his muscles I've lined up I've kept the elbow roughly in place and the rest here will need tidying. There is no doubt that that will need tidying and I will be doing that tidying. But that's the subject of next week's tutorial. This week we're just getting the uh, general figure right, the direction we want it. And there you can see. So there's our modded ogre and there's the original ogre. Is the sword. Now I've taken this sword hand and I've cut, made a cut here at the top of the hand and made a cut there at the bottom of the hand and that resulted in the hand coming off. Now that hand and the sword pose in it is pretty much at a right angle the sword goes straight through the hand and I wanted the sword if you like to tilt forward a bit so instead of being in that direction I wanted it in this direction so in order to do that let's take the blue tack off I cut away part of the hand and I hope that shows up well. So instead of being at a right angle there, I remove some of the some of the material and I carved it away, again trial and error, so that that's now at an angle. Always take off too little rather than too much because you can put it off a lot easier than you can put it back on again. So what we have here now is the back hand being raised in the air, the flag hand. Across his chest, he's looking in the right direction this way. The hand comes down and instead of bending out in this direction, it bends off in this direction and the hand in front of it. So looking from the back of him, there's the pose. And looking from the front of him, that's his direction. If we compare that with the original one, 
you can see basic basic modded now it is basic this is week part one uh, week one this show will be about 20 minutes long I would imagine by the time I finished editing and I hope that's of help for people who've never modded before and are looking forward to learning how to mod their figures I'm using ogres ogres are easier because they're bigger um, um, but any mistakes you make you can see so the, there is a trade-off the reason I'm using ogres is because they film better um, for my first attempt at modding videos. Okay folks, so there you go. The first lines of how to mod an ogre. Next week we'll be using green stuff to fill in those gaps, build up the muscles and hide the joints. We'll also be filing away some more un unwanted parts and developing the figure even more towards the wonderful character that will be Zorro the Man-Eater. Catch you next week.